Okay, in this lesson, what we're going to look at is differentiability. And um, it really ties in nicely to what we spoke about on Thursday, which was continuity. Because for a function um, that we're looking at, for a function to be differentiable at a join point, i.e. x is equal to a, the first thing that needs to happen is it needs to be continuous at that point. And once we've ascertained continuity, there's a test that we can do to see whether it's differentiable at the point. And basically the test that we run is that if the function, uh, the function's derivative as x approaches a from the left-hand side and the function's derivative as x approaches a from the right-hand side are the same and, are, uh, and exist, then we say that um, the function is, is, is then differentiable at the point. Um, this is a little confusing here. I might go back to this point, okay? And we might just go ahead and actually answer this question first of all, or do this question first of all, um, and discuss the implications. So here's a function f of x equals negative x, where x is less than zero, and x where x is greater than or equal to zero. Um, it's the modulus function actually for anyone who does special, but if you don't, it doesn't matter. Um, I might actually just modify this a little bit. So I might change the domain of this. I'm gonna change it to be from negative two um, to zero, not inclusive. All right, let's just try that. All right, so let's sketch this. So f of x equals negative x from negative 2 to 0. So what we're going to do is put negative 2 in there, which is when x is negative 2, we're here. So inclusive of this point all the way down to this point here. So we've got that. Then x greater than 0, we've got the y equals x function. Uh, it's supposed to be straight. Apologies. Anyway, um, so that's f of x. All right, now what we want to do is graph f dash x. So let's consider what f dash x actually is. So what's the derivative of this? Well, it's going to be negative 1. What's the derivative of this? It's going to be positive 1. Let's think about the domains. Okay, well, it's going to be negative 1 for all the values of x from negative 2 to 0. Well, let's just think about these endpoints. And I'm going to do something here and then explain it in a sec. So I'm going to say that this is negative 1 here. I'm going to open circle this and I'll explain why in a sec. Bring it along here and I'm going to open circle this. Okay, now mind you, this should be a closed circle because that's the original function being graphed. And this point is defined, so that should be closed circle. Okay, so that's open circle. Let's note the coordinates, uh, negative 2 comma negative 1, and this is 0 comma negative 1. All right, and then what's going to happen is for the values of x larger than and equal to 0, we're going to have a derivative of 1. So what I'm going to do is open circle this and send it along here to positive infinity. Okay, so let's talk about my domains because I'm gonna read it off the graph and then explain exactly why I've got the domains as they are. So my domain for negative one is going to be uh, from negative two, or let's just say for X is an element of, um, not that one, negative 2, 2, 0, not inclusive. And it's going to be 1 from 0 to positive infinity. Okay, now, why are we not including the endpoints? All right, well, here goes the explanation. So notice that this function here is continuous, okay, because I can draw it without lifting my pen off. Remember, that's the informal definition of continuity. Okay, so I can draw it without lifting my pen off. 
but where is it differentiable? So this function is continuous at this join point here, but what has to happen is, first of all, the limit has to exist. That is, there's got to be a value as I approach from the left and a value as I approach from the right, and those values have to be the same. Now let's have a look at what's going to happen. So as I approach zero along here, what I'm going to do is get a derivative value, okay, or a gradient value of negative one. So I'm going to get negative one, negative one. So the gradient along here is negative one, negative one. I'm running along here, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one. I hit this join point here, and the minute I hit this join point, what happens is, uh, as I get larger than the join point, I get a gradient of positive one, positive one, positive one, positive one, positive one, all the way along here. Now notice that the gradient here on the left side is negative one, gradient on the right side is positive one. And what that does is it breaches this condition right here, which is that the limit of the derivative from the left-hand side as I approach the join point is not the same as the limit as I approach A from the right-hand side for the um, derivative function. Okay, so they're not equal to each other. So that's why I've gone and excluded zero as a derivative here, because it's not going to give us, it's not dif differentiable at this point. The derivative is not defined at this point, because is the derivative negative one, or is it one, because the gradient isn't the same on the left and the right, we, we don't know, we can't decide. Okay, so we just say that the gradient is not defined at that point. So again, if I ask f dash or do f dash zero, what happens is I try to put it in here and it says it's undefined. There is no gradient at that point. All right, so now notice that I've got this continuing as one all the way to positive infinity, but notice this, I open circled this. Okay, now why did I do that? Well, it goes to this method's definition of um, continuity, okay, now uh, of differentiability. And what it means is the limit of the derivative function from the left must exist. And if I approach this value here, the derivative, or approach this from the left hand side, I don't get a left hand limit, okay, I don't get a left hand limit. So therefore, the limit does not exist. But because the limit doesn't exist, um, what that means is the function is not differentiable at this point. And so the general rule in maths methods anyway is that the derivative is not defined at the endpoint of a function. Okay? So if I do f dash negative 2, it will be undefined there. All right, so it is important to note that even though f of x, this function here is continuous everywhere, it's not differentiable everywhere, okay? So it's continuous, well, for all real numbers greater than negative two, okay? But it's only differentiable at all values except negative two and zero. All right, let's try another example. For the function with the rule blah and this, state the set of values for which the derivative is defined. Find f dash x for this set of values and sketch the graph. There's a lot going on here. All right, so to do this, what we're going to get is f dash x. Okay, so this here is the graph of f dash x. So let's replace y with f dash x versus x equals. Um, now let's do the derivative 2x plus 2 and 1. All right, so what we'll do is we'll jam in 0 as an endpoint. So when I do f dash 0, what I'm going to get is 2. Now, again, note what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make that an open circle. And let's just get a second point for shape. Um, we'll sub in one, two times one is two, two plus two is four. All right, 
So that's that graph there. Now notice I open circled that and I'll explain why in a sec. Now I want to graph f dash x for this part here now, which is all the values less than zero. So that's going to be always one. All right, so one is down here, open circle and go less. All right, so we can see here that we've got this particular um, situation now where we've got the limit as I approach the derivative from the right hand side here and the limit as I approach um, from the left hand side of the derivative function um, they're two different values okay so what we're going to say here is the function is not differentiable at the join point or zero in this case so let's state that that our derivative is defined for all the values of that greater than zero and for all the values of that less than zero. And zero is not defined. And we need to explain why f of x is not differentiable at a point, i.e. show that. So what I'm going to say is the limit as x approaches um, zero from the left-hand side of the derivative function is equal to so I'm approaching in from the left hand side here and I'm approaching one. The limit as x approaches zero from the right hand side of the derivative function is equal to two. Now notice that these two values are not the same. So I'm gonna conclude by saying the limit as x approaches zero from the left for the derivative is not equal to the limit as x approaches zero from the right for the derivative function, therefore not differentiable, not differentiable at x equals zero. Now notice that there's no chop or endpoints of this function here, so we don't need to worry about um, worry about uh, this one. Now, an interesting extension to this question would be we want to make this functional function differentiable. Okay, so let's just advance this up a little bit and say that f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 with x greater than or equal to zero. And um, we're gonna say that this function here is ax plus one, x less than zero. And the question will be that this function here is differentiable everywhere, okay? So the derivative is defined everywhere. We wanna know for what value of a will that occur? Okay, so how do we do this? Well, it's similar to this really, and we can maybe see the answer straight away. So let's write f dash x equals. Now we've got two x plus two for x greater than zero. And what would this a value need to be to match the gradient of this part here? So this one here has a gradient of two. So this a value here would have to be two. Now, why do I know that? Because if a is two x plus one, then dy dx, so if that's our function, dy dx will be two, right? And in that case, what that will do is shift this line up to be along here, which means that we can include this point this time. So we can say for all the values of x less than zero, or conversely, we could say that, which means that this derivative is defined everywhere. And in this case, f dash zero will produce two. Okay, so that's just a bit of an extension or a quick extension of this basic problem up here. Okay. All right, one last example. If f of x equals x to the one third, find f dash x. 
And what we want to do here is um, note something that happens. Right? So f dash x will be one third x to the um, what is it going to be? Negative two thirds f dash x will equal. All right, there's f dash x. Okay. Now, do you remember what x to the one third look like? That is actually the third root function. Y equals third root of x, which behaves very similar to the square root function. So that's like the square root function, and this is, the scale's all wrong here, but this is the square root function third root function behaves exactly the same except it just tries the third root function a uh, third root x values and remember what it does is it'll connect up over this side as well okay and the reason for that is you can third root a negative number so it gives you this situation here where you get a kind of you get the rotation 180 about the origin which will produce this part of the third root function now, it's continuous everywhere, okay? Um, but what we're gonna do is note that it's not differentiable at x is equal to zero. And we're gonna find out why. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in zero and just see what happens. One over three, so zero to the two thirds is gonna be zero. Zero times three is zero. One divided by zero, or all, so this is undefined. Now, why? Well, if you look at this graph here, what we've got is as it goes through the origin here, what happens is we get this, uh, I can't call it a stationary point, but we get this point here where the gradient will be this vertical line, okay? So the gradient will be such that the tangent to the curve at this point here will be a vertical line. Now, what's the gradient of a vertical line? Why, what's the gradient of x equal two? Well, it doesn't have any gradient because the defi definition of gradient is as x increases and x doesn't increase. So this has got an undefined gradient, okay? So find f dash x, okay? So this is f dash x but we need to say something else with f dash x. We're gonna say where x not equal zero. We're not gonna let them put zero into the function because at x is equal to zero, it's gonna produce a vertical line and vertical lines have no gradient. Okay, so differentiability was a huge part of last year's SAC. So make sure you go through this exercise here, which is 9M um, with a fine tooth comb. Note all the notation here, things like when you actually do do show that's, all of this stuff is crucial, just like I showed you with, um, with um, showing continuity, okay? Now, once you've um, done the exercise, which is three, uh, 9M rather, what I want you to do is make sure um, you do the worksheet, okay? So the worksheet um, is, um, I'll put that up onto Firefly, okay? So I'll explain, I know this is one, two methods, but I'll put it up onto the three, four page so you can find that worksheet, but that's absolutely crucial. I don't think Cambridge is nowhere, it's nowhere near as, um, as detailed as um, as this worksheet will be. So do Cambridge first, worksheet second, um, and I'll jump on line at, or during period two on Monday, to go through any questions, queries, concerns.